APIs and web services. What's the difference? That's a question you may have asked yourself, and in this video we will give a short answer, which I think is technically correct, but maybe a little uh, not so subtle, and then a longer one which really looks at the history of these terms and maybe gives you a better way to answer this question in a meaningful way. Let's look at the short answer first. So the short answer is web services are a specific flavor of APIs that rely on a number of building blocks that use web technologies. So in the end, what the short answer tells you is that web services are just one way to do APIs. And in that sense, you could say that web services and APIs are, so to speak, a little bit different categorically, because web services are just one flavor of APIs. In my mind, that answer is correct, but it may not be the, the most helpful thing how you can answer this question. So let's look a little bit at why this question might even come up, what the context of the answer probably should take into account, and what the longer story looks like. And for this, it's really useful to just have a little bit of a history around these terms. When we look at APIs, it's a very, very old term. Most people probably are surprised to hear that the first time it was mentioned in a research paper was in 1968. That's quite a while ago. And it was mentioned as something where program interactions would take place. In that paper, it was a program that was about graphical representations, and the program then would interact with a system that would display those graphical representations. So it is this fundamental idea of two software components doing things and interacting, but it was for the longest time this term was used for local APIs, meaning APIs where the two programs interacting are on the same computer. The first mention that I found of the term API for something that actually crosses the network and not just is on one computer, is in Roy Fielding's famous dissertation, which is from 2000, where he specifically talks about network APIs, taking the same term and extending it to this different area of two programs interacting across a computer network. So there's a long history to the term API. Now, Let's look at web services. It all started in 1998 with something called XML RPC. Maybe you've heard of it, probably not. What happened? What happened was that back in 1991, HTTP was invented, the foundational protocol of the web. And then XML was invented in 1998 as a general language, how to represent information. And then very quickly, somebody came up with the idea that, hey, we could actually use this XML to exchange information across the internet. Back then, a lot of people talked about business to business. In the end, I think it would be more precise to talk about web machine to machine communications. This idea of using XML over HTTP to make two programs talk to each other is something that was the first time that web technologies were used not just to have a browser communicating with a server, but to have, so to speak, two servers or two applications just talk to each other and exchange structured information. Now, XML RPC was not very successful. It was very, very minimal, and very quickly it was replaced by something else called SOAP. You probably have heard of SOAP. SOAP is a little bit more complicated. It uses the same foundation that XML RPC used, which is HTTP. But instead of using XML RPC, which is a very, very simple XML format, it uses SOAP, which is a very, very complex XML format. It, it was standardized in a committee and it has the classical feature bloat and everybody gets their feature into the spec that you can see in a lot of specifications which are created that way. SOAP also has, let's say, two complementary specifications which also often are mentioned. One is WISTL, the Web Services Definition Language, which allows you to describe the interface of a SOAP service. So it's kind of the open API for SOAP. That's probably the best way to think of it. Whistler was pretty popular because it allowed you to publish a specification of your web service. Another thing that was also part of this 
set of web service specifications was UDDI. UDDI was meant as a registry for web services, but it never really took off. It, it was flawed in many ways. And I so far, I really haven't heard many success stories around UDDI. By, by now, it's, it's very outdated anyway. But it's something that was kind of promoted as being part of the overall web services picture, but it never really was successful. Then that was in the 2000s. And then what happened was that web services, for a variety of reasons that we won't go into today, it actually would be interesting to, to do a video just about that. But for a variety of reasons, web services were not received only well. Some people also thought it's too complicated. There are too many standards. Interoperability is not so great. And then as a reaction to that, instead of relying on this relatively heavy stack of technologies of SOAP and WSDL and UDDI, in 2001, very soon after SOAP came out in its first version, JSON came along. And JSON was a much simpler way to define the payload of messages you can exchange. A while ago, I created a whole video trying to explain why JSON was better received than XML. And again, that is something you can dis discuss for a long time. But most importantly for this video, let's just look at why JSON was successful. And it was mostly successful because it was lighter weight. It was supposed to be an alternative that still worked over HTTP. But instead of using kind of the bloated SOAP XML stack of technologies, it just used JSON, a very simple language, very easy to learn, mapped very well to most programming languages. And that was just a very different approach in how you can do web services or how you can do um, APIs, right? All depends on your terminology. And this just tells you the general picture, I would say, of where APIs are going and where they're still going today. The API space is very active. It's very dynamic. It's still evolving. That's one of the really interesting things around the API space. It's always evolving. So we have new technologies coming up all the time. There's GraphQL, which has been around for a while. There's something like event-driven APIs, which also have been around in a while, for a while. There are all these different styles that, that you can have. There is something like gRPC as well. So we won't go into all these different technologies, but as you can see, it is a space that evolves rapidly. And web services were kind of a thing of the 2000s. So what can we learn from all of this? What we can learn is for most people, it's probably fair to say that they would agree that web services are something from like the 2000s when people were betting on this first wave of web oriented or web based machine to machine communication protocols. Nowadays, many API technologies use newer technologies, even though they oftentimes still are based on HTTP, but they are not using the SOAP, WSTL, UDDI standards anymore. And for most people, that means they're not really web services. But again, it all depends on how you use these terms. And that's really what I want to get to with this long history and with this long answer. It's really hard to tell what this question is meaning without understanding the context in which it is being asked. And most importantly, understanding the context about what do you mean by web services and what do you mean by APIs? So in my mind, if you want to answer the question, what's the difference between APIs and web services? The most important thing is to make sure that you ask, what is a web service for you? What do you mean when you say web service? What is an API for you? What do you mean when you say API? And maybe even more importantly, it's not so important to just fight over definitions or try to compare two things. Mostly it's important to figure out why are you even asking? Like, what do you want to compare? What do you want to achieve? What are the constraints of maybe a solution you're looking for? Where do you want to get away from? Where do you want to move towards? In the end, I think the most important thing is really to understand that this is not a a test question. So if somebody asks you this as a test question without any context, it's almost like a trick question 
because you don't know the context and context is important. So going back to our original answer that said web services are a specific flavor of APIs that rely on a number of building blocks that use web technologies. I think the best way to use this, I think this is correct, but I think the best way to use this is to really preface this always just by saying for the way I use these terms and then follow up with, I think this is the difference. Because then you make sure that it's not an absolute answer, but it's an answer that is right for the way how you define those terms. And this concludes everything that I had to say about APIs and web services and the difference. Keep in mind that, again, I come with my own bias. I come with my own understanding of these terms. I think I explained a little bit where I derive those definitions from. Mostly it's my understanding of the history of these terms, of the evolution of the technology space and, and how these different things kind of transitioned into each other or were taking over, becoming more popular in the API space. And that's, I think, something that everybody can do, making up their minds, thinking about what do I think is the difference. And then as long as you can explain why you think that's the difference, I think you're okay. And with that, I am done. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to this channel. I keep posting new API videos all the time. So if you're in the API space, maybe there's something interesting for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye until next time.